Hi. Now we've already seen that a vector quantity is something that has both magnitude and direction and we can define vectors by directed line segments, something like this. Now we give directed line segments, vectors, names and we could call this vector, say the vector A. And in textbooks you'll often see this written in bold print. But if we're writing it by hand, we have to just write a little squiggle under the A, for instance. So you can see a vector given like this. Here's another vector going in this direction. I can give it another name, like the vector B. They're also called displacement vectors. They show how we can move from one point to another. Like for instance in this one, let's just suppose that we had a vector that went from this point, we'll call it A, and this point here, B. So if we were going from A to B, we can write this as the vector A to B. Little arrow on the top, A to B, not B to A, alright? Okay, so this is one way that we can notate vectors. Another way is by using a grid and column vectors. Something like this. Let's suppose we had a point down here at minus 2, minus 2. This is the point A having coordinates minus 2, minus 2. And suppose we took this point here, it has coordinates minus 1, 2. Let's call it B. B has coordinates minus 1, 2. Then if I join from A to B, we have this displacement vector. We can see that A to B is given by the vector 1 across and 1, 2, 3, 4 up. And we write it like this, 1, 4. The top number always tells us how much we go in the positive horizontal x direction. And the bottom number tells us how much we rise in the positive y direction. If I had a vector like this one, going from here down to here. And if I called this C and D, then the vector C to D is given as 2 across, 4 down, 2, and we write minus 4. So what do you think a vector like this would mean? Going from here to here. Let's just call it the vector E, say. So what would the vector E be? Well here we're going 1, 2, 3 to the left, so it's going to be minus 3, and we're going 1 up, so minus 3, 1. Now there is another way that we can describe vectors, and that's through something called the unit base vectors. These are vectors that are one unit long, and the unit base vector in the x-direction is a vector that goes to the right, and as a column vector, it would be 1 along, none up, 1, 0. And we call this the base vector i, which would normally be written in bold print, but if we're doing it by handwriting, we need to write a little squiggle underneath it. And there's another vector called j, the unit base vector in the positive y sense. And so this vector, as a column vector, would be 0, 1. Now, any vector that we like can be represented in terms of i's and j's. I mean, if I took a vector like this one here, this vector, I'll give it a name, let's call it the vector a, if you like, would be 1, 2, 3 in the i direction and 1 unit in the j direction. So we would describe that vector a as being... 3i plus 1j, or just simply j. As a column vector, we know that it would be written as 3, 1. But in terms of the base vectors i and j, it would be just 3i and 
1j or just simply j. Now so far we've been looking at vectors in two dimensions but you can also get vectors in three dimensions and here I've got an x, y and z axis, three perpendicular axes all at right angles to one another. And just as before when we had unit base vectors we can have unit vectors in the directions of x, y and z. That is if we had a vector in the positive sense of x one unit long this would be the vector i now and it is given as a column vector as one unit in the x direction none in the y direction and none in the z direction and we have a unit vector in the positive y direction that one is given the letter j so we've got j equals now there's none in the x direction, one unit in the y direction, and no units in the z direction. So j is the vector 0, 1, 0. And finally, we introduce this third unit vector in the positive sense of the z direction. And that vector is given the letter k. So k would be none in the x direction, none in the y direction, but one unit in the positive z direction. So k as a unit vector is 0, 0, 1. And we can describe any vector, any three-dimensional vector, in terms of i's, j's and k's. Like for instance, suppose we had this cuboid. It gives a three-dimensional feel to the problem if we can use this. Suppose this cuboid had dimensions, say, of four units long, three units wide, and two units high. So if we had a vector that went from this corner here to this corner over here, let's say that this was the vector AB. Then what would AB be in terms of our unit vectors i, j and k? Well it would simply be that A to B equaled 4 in the i direction, 4i, followed by 3 in the j direction and 2 in the k direction. Or you could write it as a column vector, just simply as 4, 3, 2. Now here's another vector we could try, going from say this vertex here to this one down here. Let's call it going from C to D. What would it be in terms of I's, J's and K's? Well the vector C to D then would be equal to Starting from here, we're moving 4 in the positive i sense, and then we are going minus 3 in the j sense. We're adding negative 3j, or just simply minus 3j. That brings us to here, and now we've got to go downwards in the opposite sense to k, so it'd be minus 2k. So hopefully that's given you an idea then how we can write vectors, the different types of notation. It can be as a column vector or in terms of the unit base vectors i and j and if it's three dimensions k. Well that brings us now then to the end of this tutorial.